Hello there, Richard Westwood here from St Anne's Church in Chasetown with a midweek message for Wednesday the 27th of March. In our midweek messages during the season of Lent, we've been looking at people in prayer, looking at how different people in the pages of the Bible approach God in prayer and how we might learn from them. And in this Holy Week, I'm going to read to you a section from Mark's Gospel where we see and read about Jesus praying in Gethsemane. This is um, from Mark's Gospel, chapter 14, beginning to read at verse 32. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James and John along with him and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back he found them again sleeping, because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Enough, the hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Reading these words from the Gospel of Mark, and there are equivalent passages in Luke and Matthew, we get a sense of the anguish that Jesus is facing as he is about to be handed over and then mistreated, tortured, killed as he's crucified. And there's a sense that we have that Jesus knows this is what is coming it's easy for us to feel the, the sense of betrayal which is there, not just from the point of Judas who does the betraying, but also from Simon and the other disciples who Jesus was looking to uh, support him in, in his hour of need here. Peter, James and John are the three who he draws close to him and urges them to pray and for whatever reason they aren't able to do that. But in this short midweek message, I don't particularly want to focus on the encounter between Jesus and Peter and James and John there, but more about how Jesus prays, uh, the circumstances of his prayer and what he prays. Firstly, the circumstances of Jesus' prayer are in his absolute desperation. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. And for us, we therefore can know that even in the absolute worst of our times, the right thing to do is to pray. Even if we don't know what to pray or how to pray, we can ache a prayer to God in the clumsiest of words or the lack of words. And with Jesus, when we feel overwhelmed, even to the point of death. 
we can pray. We can ask for God's help. Secondly, if we look at what Jesus prays, we can see that he prays for all things. Well, he prays, first of all, um, everything is possible for you, he says to God, his Father. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. He acknowledges that God is able to do anything and yet doesn't ask for anything. Or rather, he is acknowledging that sometimes God's will is different from what we, in our moment of struggling and suffering, may actually want. And says those words, not what I want, but what you want. Not what I will, but what you will. And I guess in all of our struggles, we too need to try to have that approach. Lord, that we know you can draw us out of things that we might be struggling with. But often it is God, God is with us in them rather than plucking us out of them. Those prayers from Jesus, those words, not what I want, but what you want, can be our prayer too. Lord, your will be done, not what I want. Your will, Lord. And third is to mention the manner and tone of his praying. We can have a sense of the desperation that's there for him. And yet he uses the most intimate of approaches. Abba, Father, it's the, the Aramaic word for daddy, uh, of a nearness and closeness to God which speaks of God as being so intimately close to us that we can, that we can call upon God in those intimate and close terms. Just some brief thoughts then in this Holy Week as we continue to think about people in prayer. Jesus praying in the midst of his sorrow and distress. It's always the right thing to do to pray, especially when we're in the middle of a time of great stress, trouble and sorrow. He prays in the most intimate of ways, knowing that God is his loving father, his daddy, his intimate, close carer. And he prays knowing that God's will is ultimately what is best, even though that will for Jesus be a path of sorrow and suffering. He's able to pray, not what I want, but what you want. Yet not what I will, he says, but what you will. May we be given grace to pray in such a way. A prayer just now. Living God, we marvel at the strength that Jesus has to pray such words, knowing the sort of horror that he was to face, the suffering that was to come. Thank you for giving him strength to be able to pray, Lord, not what I want, but what you want, not my will, but yours be done. Please give us grace in our times of struggle and suffering to turn to you, knowing that you're our loving father, our daddy, our intimate, close carer. And may we be able to trust you to pray, Lord, not what I want, but what you want. Not my will, but your will be done. Lord, give us that grace that we need to follow in Jesus' steps knowing that, as he has shown us, your will is always what is best. Amen. I hope this Holy Week is a good one for you, where you might know God drawing you closer and with new and fresh insights of the love that God has for us, shown through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. Here at St Anne's we've got services this coming a uh, few days. On Maundy Thursday, we've got a seven o'clock informal meal with worship. Uh, 
kind of reenacting the, the Last Supper, uh, which is on Thursday, 7 o'clock, and you're very welcome to join in that if you'd like to. On Good Friday, there's a walk of witness beginning at 10.30 from the Chasetown Methodist Church, visiting a couple of points en route to St Anne's, where we'll, we'll be worshipping along the way with some readings and songs at different points on the way before we return to St Anne's at about a quarter to twelve where we'll share some refreshments and hot cross buns. And then at two o'clock in the afternoon we have an hour at the cross, readings and reflections, songs as we contemplate and think on the great love of Jesus as he dies on the cross. And then on Easter Sunday at 6.30 in the morning at Castle Ring there's our sunrise worship service for, for Easter Sunday morning, 10.15 Holy Communion here at St Anne's and a six o'clock Easter Songs of Praise uh, in the evening as well. And please feel free to join in any of those. Uh, we hope to be able to live stream them as well. So if you can't join in person, please do join through our Facebook's, um, Facebook live stream. When you get there, have a happy Easter and a blessed Holy Week. God bless. Take care.